More and more drivers are switching to electric vehicles or EVs. In this video, I'll walk you through everything you need to know when it comes to charging one. Let's get to it. First, let's talk about how EV chargers work. They transfer electrical energy from a power source, like the electricity in your house, to a battery inside the vehicle. The rate of this energy flow is measured in kilowatts. The battery stores the charge so it can be used later. Let's break this down a little further using a swimming pool as an example. Volts are the amount of electricity your battery is getting, or in our example, the water pressure coming from the hose. Amps are the electrical flow through the charging cable. The higher the amps, the faster your vehicle charges. In our example, the wider the hose, the more water that can pass through. Volts times amps equals kilowatts. Kilowatts is the amount of water being added over a period of time. They're how much energy your EV gets per hour. For example, a seven kilowatt charging station can deliver seven kilowatts of power to your EV's battery per hour. In short, the higher the kilowatt output, the faster your EV will charge. The same is true with amps. Generally, the higher number of amps will lead to faster charging. Some manufacturers offer chargers at various amp ratings. For example, Juicebox has chargers with amp ratings of 32, 40, and 48. If you already have a 240 volt outlet in your home, similar to what you may have on an electric dryer that you can use for EV charging, look for a charger that has the same style plug as the outlet. Try to use a charger that uses up to 80% of the amp rating for the breaker on the circuit. For example, if the outlet has a 40 amp breaker, look for a charger that is rated for 32 amps. Chargers that have a higher amp rating than the breaker on the circuit can often be derated to a lower amperage. But how can you find out the amps on a 240 volt outlet? Well, it really depends on the outlet. Some outlets are rated for lower amps, while others can handle higher ones. You can usually find the outlet's rating on a label or plate near the outlet. If it isn't there, you can look at your electrical panel and see how many amps the breaker is for that outlet. If you don't have an outlet installed, it may be a good idea to partner with an electrician to ensure the most effective charging with your EV. They can look at things such as your electric panel size or capacity, breakers and wiring that you may need to have a charger installed in your home. All right. So now that you understand the key terms and how they apply, let's talk chargers. There are three main types of chargers, level one, level two, and DC fast charging, sometimes referred to as level three. Level ones are the most basic. They can be plugged into most standard outlets using a NEMA 515 plug. Don't let this confuse you. It's just the technical name for your standard three-prong outlet. With these, for every hour you charge, you'll get about four to five miles of range. This is great for those that don't drive much or only need to go short distances. And the good news is that level one chargers are often included with the vehicle. Now, level twos are much faster than level ones, providing up to 25 miles of range per hour of charging. This is usually good for most EV users and their day-to-day -day needs. Level two chargers require a 240 volt outlet or are hardwired to your electric panel. For example, this one from Juicebox plugs right into a 240 volt NEMA 1450 outlet. If you already have a 240 volt outlet, you can mount the charger nearby. Just make sure you follow the manufacturer's recommendations and place it where it can reach the car without the use of an extension cord. However, if you're hardwiring it, the process can be more complicated. We won't get into the details here. Just know that hiring an electrician is strongly encouraged. You might need an adapter for some level twos. For example, a NEMA 1030 or a NEMA 1430. Check out this level two charger from Wallbox. It uses a hardwired connection. They're usually mounted to a wall, often in a garage, making it convenient to plug into your vehicle. And most connect to Wi-Fi, so you can keep an eye on things in the app. And depending on the charger, you might be able to make some adjustments. And when you're shopping for a charger, see if your state or utility provider have programs to help with the installation, cost of the charger, or even a discount on electricity. These programs often have requirements, like only using it during certain times of the day, but they can really make a difference. Finally, there are DC fast chargers, sometimes referred to as level three. 
These aren't currently available for home use, but can be found in commercial spaces via useful apps, including those that come with the vehicle. As the name implies, these are the fastest chargers available as of this recording. They use a special connector and can charge a battery up to 80% in just 30 minutes. These are great for long road trips, when you need to recharge quickly, or if you don't have an at-home level 2 charger, but perhaps can easily visit a DC fast charger near you. Now, you should know that not all EVs are compatible with fast charging, so you'll want to check your vehicle specs to find out. Also, another critical consideration are connectors and ports. The two connectors and ports you will often see for level one and level two charging are J1772 and Teslas. As you probably guessed, the type you need depends on your charger and vehicle. For example, the juice box and wall box chargers have the J1772 connector. If you need it, you can get an adapter like this one from Lectron, which works with a Tesla. Lectron also has an adapter that will allow a Tesla home charger to work with an EV that has a J1772 port. When charging your EV at home with a J1772 connector, you may notice that it doesn't use all the connection on your EV's charging port. These additional connections are used with a CCS or CCS1 connector when you are using a DC fast charger with your car. As you can see, compatibility is everything. Not all EVs are compatible with all types of chargers and connectors, so it's important to get the right ones based on your needs. So that's a bit about the equipment. Now let's talk about how it works, and it starts with an exciting thing called the kilowatt. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the measurement of energy being transferred. The higher the kilowatt rating, the faster your vehicle will charge. Now, there are two kilowatt ratings, one for your vehicle and one for the charger. They're separate. In other words, the battery in your EV can only charge so fast. It has a max rating, and the charging station can only kick out so much energy. Remember when I brought up that other term, kilowatt hour? Yeah, this measurement is talking about the capacity of the battery. You may see things such as a 50 kilowatt hour or 75 kilowatt hour battery. Okay. All that info to help answer the critical question. So how long will my vehicle take to charge? Well, unfortunately, this is one you'll have to answer on your own because it depends on the type of charger, size of the battery in the car, how low of a charge the battery has, and other variables. But let me give you some ballparks. If you have an EV with an extremely low amount of charge in the battery, level one charging can take 24 hours or more to fully charge it. Level two, on the other hand, can cut that time in half or even better. And DC fast charging is usually only an hour or two. But again, remember that not all EVs are compatible with fast charging and other things that can impact how fast a car charges. That said, there are a few things to keep in mind when it comes to charging times. For example, a battery often charges faster when it's low or empty. Think of a movie theater. If you're the first person in, you can find a seat quickly. But when the theater is nearly full, it might take more time to find a seat. The same is true with battery charging. Also, outside temperature is a big factor. Cold weather can slow down the charge rate. Because of this, some manufacturers recommend warming up the batteries, possibly by a heated garage or a battery preconditioning feature in the EV before charging. If that's not possible, just know that the weather might have an impact on the charge rate. So there you have it, a quick rundown on the EV charging process and equipment. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. Thanks for watching and check out our channel for more tech tips from Best Buy.